So now we had seen about various uh, Mendelian disorders, non-Mendelian disorders, then chromosomal disorders. The last one was the multifactorial inheritance, which I have already discussed the examples. Okay. So now let us see how to diagnose these genetic disorders. So the first one will be the um, polymerase chain reaction. So polymerase chain reaction is usually it is used for amplification and detection. So amplification of and uh, usually usually happening for very short DNA fragments. So use uh, for very short DNA fragments will be amplified and then they'll be sequenced. So the various methods of um, uh, uh, various methods use this PCR. So, we let us see one by one. So, first one will be the Sanger sequencing. It was the very initial method and still it is the gold standard for sequencing. And here, if we can use a Sanger sequencing nowadays whenever there is you are wanting to detect any large genes or when you want to detect multiple genes. So, multiple genes or large genes, you can use Sanger's sequencing. Pyro sequencing. Pyro means something related to heat. Okay, so in this um, uh, pyro sequencing, it is usually used to detect uh, cells in which there is a contamination. So there is a contaminated sample. From that, you are going to want to extract only certain sample uh, uh, specific cells, and then you want to sequence them. So for that uh, environment, wherein you have to study specific cells in a contaminated sample. So, for that you can use pyro sequencing. Suppose that uh, you, are, you are obtaining a tumor uh, cell biopsy. So, in the tumor cells you are also going to have the surrounding stromal cells. So, you do not want to study the stromal cells, you want to study the tumor cells. So, for extracting this tumor cells from the uh, uh, stromal and contamination and studying that you can use this pyro sequencing. Okay. The next method is single base primer extension. Here, as the name suggests, it is using a single base. So, whenever there is a mutation at a single nucleotide, a mutation is going to be present at a single nucleotide, then you can use this method for uh, amplification. So, single base primer extension. So, for example, we have BRAF V600 E mutation. So, BRAF V600E mutation we usually see. So, in this the mutation is specific at this side V600E. So, at the 600 position V is going to replace E. So, uh, sorry E is going to replace V. So, in this BRAF V600E mutation you can use the single base primer extension to amplify. Then restriction fragment length analysis. So, here it is exact opposite of single base primer. Here the uh, nucleotide mutation is going to happen at a invariant nucleotide position at an invariant position okay so in single base primer the exact position was known so it was happening at a single nucleotide but here if you are having nucleotide positions which are going to vary with the disease so nucleotide uh, invariant position uh, mutations you can identify with restriction fragment length polymorph uh, analysis then we have amplicon length analysis so, as the name suggests, there is length here. So, any disease which involves the uh, change in the length of the DNA. Like deletions. So, deletion it is going to result in small uh, shortening of the DNA. While expansion that is trinucleated repeats. They are going to result in the expansion of the uh, lengthening of the DNA. So, for this we can use amplicon length analysis and already I have mentioned uh, expansion we can use PCR this amplicon length analysis or when there is going to be large expansion. So, lots of expansions. So, in that case we have to use southern blot technique. Right. Then we have real time PCR. So, as the name suggests, it is going to be PCR is going to be real time. So, PCR, what we do is initially we will have to extract, then we amplify it, then we sequence it. But here the sequencing is going to happen in the exponential phase itself. So, during the amplification itself, you can simultaneously sequence it. So, real time sequencing during amplification. That is during the exponential phase of PCR. 
okay so where do you use this rt pcr so rt pcr usually we check to uh, use it for checking the viral load so infections like hiv so here you will have to check the viral load for that you can use this and other than that for cml to identify the bcr abl uh, fusion transcripts so how much amount of fusion protein is there so based on that we can detect the minimal residual disease so uh, after treatment you have to detect the minimal residual disease so for that again to quantify the load of the fusion protein you can use this real time pcr so now we had seen about the various types of pcr so what are the shortcomings of pcr PCR cannot detect any large changes like large deletions, duplications or complex uh, rearrangements. So like translocations. So those cannot be detected by PCR. So for these things, we are going to use something called as hybridization techniques. So hybridization techniques can be used for that purpose. So let's see about the hybridization techniques now. So the first hybridization technique is FISH. So FISH is fluorescent. In situ hybridization. So, as the name suggests, there is going to be something, uh, some usage of some fluorescent dyes. So, you are going to visualize it under the fluorescent microscope. So, here the resolution is going to be 200 kilo base. Okay. So, for fish to be used, you will have to know the target gene. So, the exact location of the target gene has been known. So, if it is unknown, you cannot use fish. You will have to know where the mutation is normally present. Okay. Suppose you are checking for a HER2 amplification. So, in that case, you know there is going to be a HER2 amplification. So, you know the location of the HER2 also. Only then you can use a DNA probe specific for that site and then you can identify the, this. Target gene location must be known for using fish technique. Okay. So, where all can we use to uh, detect the numerical abnormalities like aneuploidy? So, increase or decrease. So, trisomy you can see. So, trisomy you will get 3 fluorescent uh, marks rather than just 2. We will usually have 2 copies. So, 2 dice will be present. So, normally if you see 2 red dice will be there, 2 green dice will be there. This, this is going to be normal. But in this uh, trisomies you are going to have 3 copies of a single chromosome, right? So, 1 color will be 3 in number. Okay, so that kind of thing. Aneuploidy you can use. Then gene amplification, like I mentioned, her two new amplification in breast cancers. So for that you can use fish. Then you can use for complex translocation. So any uh, translocation like translocation 922, which is a BCR ABL fusion in CML. So that again, any translocations again you can use fish. So what are the types of fish? So you have chromosome painting. So, chromosome painting is nothing but you are going to use some fluorescent dyes which, uh, which are going to span the entire chromosome for a single chromosome. Okay. So, probes will be used against the single chromosome. So, you can study the entire chromosome. So, if you use some more dyes, you can study simultaneously uh, very few chromosomes. Okay. So, that is chromosome painting. While spectral karyotyping is also called as multicolor fish, here you are going to use multiple, at least five fluorophores. So, five different dyes will be used and they will be used for spanning multiple chromosomes. So, you can actually detect multiple chromosomes at a particular time itself. Okay. So, that is spectral karyotyping or multicolor fish. Then we have MLPA. MLPA is multiplex ligation dependent probe amplification. So, this is basically a combination of both PCR and FISH technique. Okay. So, in PCR, we saw that very large kind of changes like deletion, very large deletions, duplications, chromosomal translocations, uh, those were not being able to detect it, right. So, and in FISH, if you, uh, we saw that there is very small changes will not be detected in fish. So, in PCR, very large changes will not be detected. In PC, uh, fish, it is uh, very small changes will not be detected. But MLPA is going to combine both these techniques. So, MLPA is basically PCR plus fish only. So, in this, we can detect both large defects and smaller defects also. So, any kind of, any size defects, duplication, deletions, anything can be found with MLPA. So, the third uh, uh, technique will, uh, will be, we had seen about PCR hybridization techniques. Third technique will be cytogenomic array, array technology. So, this is uh, generally used for detecting unknown mutations. Okay. 
so you don't know where the um, uh, causative gene is there so what you do is they take the entire dna probe of the human genome so uh, they usually have a array like this so in that array you are they are going to have multiple wells so in the wells there will be the entire human uh, genome dna probes so to that you are going to add some test sample and normal sample then we'll compare the expression so let's see so first one will be an array based comparative genomic hybridization this is one of the techniques of array uh, cytogenetics mm, okay so array based cgh is compared to genomic hybridization here we are going to detect copy number variations so what we do is like i mentioned there is going to be a array in which there is going to be multiple wells in which you are going to have uh, dna probes which are spanning the entire human genome so now i am to this thing i am going to add a mixture of test dna along with normal sample dna so test dna and normal sample dna so for each of this i am going to give a different color so for the normal dna i am going to tag it with a different color dye and for the test dna i am going to add it with a different dye so i am making a mixture out of this and pouring it into each of the wells so every well i'll put this uh, mixture so at each at each of the mixture there is going to be hybridization between this test uh, test dna normal dna and along with the um, human normal dna probes which are present in the well as such so based on their hybridization they are going to be uh, detected so what is the how do they interpret is that at each specific probe we'll have to check for the uh, kind of fluorescence we have already tagged them with dye right so with the kind of fluorescence they'll detect the defect so suppose there is an yellow defect in the first well so yellow fluorescence in the first well it means that both the dyes are being expressed equally that is the test dna and the normal dna meaning it is going to be normal equal test and normal is there so it is going to have an yellow fluorescence while if there is a red fluorescence at a particular well it means that there is going to be a gain of the test dna gain or duplication however if at a well there is going to be green fluorescence it means that there is loss or deletion of test dna at the particular site okay this can be again as in mcq so remember green is for loss while uh, gain is for red so based on the type of fluorescence you can detect uh, where exactly the problem is there okay then we also have snp arrays snp is single nucleotide polymorphisms so what are single nucleotide polymorphisms i'll just brief it uh, uh, initially so any two individual is not the same right so it, the variation between two individuals is basically because of certain polymorphisms so those variations are called as or because of single nucleotide polymorphisms copy number variations and some repeat sequences which are either micro satellites or mini satellites so these three things are the uh, ones which are responsible for variation between any two individuals these actually constitute very small part only so 99.5 percentage ki above the any two individuals are actually same it is just this 0.5 percentage which determines the variation in the individuals so this 0.5 percentage is constituted by this single nucleotide polymorphism copy number variation and repeat sequences okay so we can detect the single nucleotide polymorphisms based on this array based technology again so what what is important about this snp arrays is that they are being used for genome wide association studies so genome wide association studies we use this snp arrays so example in uh, suspicions of autism or any congenital abnormalities or abnormal facies so in this case if the karyotype is normal and the parents are normal and they still suspect a uh, genetic defect in the kid they can go for this snp arrays okay because it is based on genome wide association studies so to understand this genome wide association studies you need to understand something called as linkage analysis so uh, this uh, according to this linkage analysis what is that uh, suppose there is a deceased gene so this is the deceased gene here uh, in the sorry this is the dna in which there is the deceased allele over this part so it is uh, proposed that along with the deceased allele certain genes which are around it are also going to be inherited so when the disease is going to pass from one person to another this one generation to another along with the deceased allele the surrounding area 
is also going to be surrounding genes surround this allele is going to be inherited so the surrounding genes which are all uh, they are called as marker loci okay so this method is called as actually linkage disequilibrium linkage disequilibrium so this marker loci which was actually around this diseased allele are nothing but single nucleotide polymorphisms and repeat sequences okay so these two are the ones which are the marker loci actually so, so uh, for detecting this um, diseases in which there are going to be multifactorial inheritance or you don't know uh, what there are going to be multiple uh, genes which are going to be there or larger genes so in those cases you can use this genome wide uh, genome wide association studies which uses this linkage analysis to identify the gene which is actually causing the disease so it can be used in, in diseases of multifactorial inheritance like diabetes mellitus and hypertension so here what they do is they will take cohorts of uh, large cohorts of normal people and also deceased people. So, together they will take them and from both of them they will be studying for single nucleotide polymorphisms. So, how do they vary? So, they will study for the single nucleotide polymorphisms using this SNP arrays. So, when the this SNPs are uh, studied, they will find out that certain SNPs are going to be over represented in the deceased group as compared to the normal group. So, those were the actual polymorphisms, right? So, the, those are going to be over expressed in the deceased group. So, with that, they uh, and SNPs I told, they are the marker loci. So, surrounding that marker loci only, you are going to have the deceased allele. So, this is what is stated, SNPs are over expressed in deceased uh, having association with the causal genes. So, this is how they find the multifactorial inheritance. Okay. So, this is what is genomic, uh, genome wide association studies. So, just remember genome wide association studies uses this linkage analysis, linkage disequilibrium theory, and uh, for this, you are going to use the SNP arrays to identify multifactorial diseases in which you are going to have either unknown. Uh, uh, de genes which are going to be detected or you can have multiple genes which you are need to identify the causal relationship okay this much you understand that is enough then the last technique is the next generation sequencing which is the very newest technique here so next generation sequencing in which it is large amounts of parallel sequencing can happen that is multiple sequences can be uh, simultaneously amplified and sequenced uh, in a very uh, parallel manner so they are going to take up very short, 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 short sequences and they will be amplified and simultaneously they are going to be sequenced. So, this is the best technique and with this NGS technique, you can literally uh, sequence the entire human genome. So, everything is possible with NGS. So, that is the best technique out of all. So, now we had seen about the uh, lab diagnosis of the various genetic disorders also. 